In this video we're going to talk about quadratic models and we're also going to complete an example. This chapter deals with real life problems that can be modeled using quadratic functions and graphs. Now we all know that a quadratic graph is really just a parabola and you'll see I've got a couple of images here and these are great examples of where a parabola comes in really handy. We'll talk about the first one, which is a satellite dish. And satellite dishes have a parabolic shape to them. So why would they do that? Well, whenever a signal comes down and hits the dish, it will always reflect off that point and go straight to the receiver where we want it to go. So whether it hits almost in the center of the dish, it will reflect to that point or over on the edge of the dish, it will always reflect to that point because of the parabolic shape of the dish. This ensures that our receiver has the best possible chance of receiving the signal. The next one is a flashlight. When you look into a flashlight, you will see a reflector inside of it. And that reflector has a parabolic shape to it. It looks something like this from the side. You've got your silver reflector in the flashlight, and then you've got the little light bulb. Now, the reason they do this is because any light that comes from the light bulb that hits the reflector will be bounced directly forward. This is great because you want as much light as possible going straight ahead towards the object you are looking at. Another thing that makes our quadratic functions and graphs really useful is they are great when you need to deal with things such as maximums and minimums. This can prove to be very profitable for a business when they want to maximize profits and minimize expense. Anyway, let's move on to our example now. Example one, a company would like to know what number of employees will bring in the maximum profit? Now, the relationship between these two variables is modeled by the function p equals negative 0.4 n squared plus 8n. Now, p stands for the weekly profit in thousands of dollars, and n stands for the number of employees that worked each day that week. Question A says, complete the table of values below and then draw the graph for this equation. So we'll start at the very first column here where n equals 0. And we'll bring down our equation and we'll substitute 0 in place of n. So p equals negative 0 0.4 times n squared or 0 squared plus 8n or 8 times 0. Now, when we bring up our calculator, we're going to go negative 0 0.4 times 0 squared plus 8 times 0. And this comes out to equal 0. So P equals 0 on our table of values. When we move on to the next column, N is 5, we're going to substitute that into our equation. So P equals negative 0 0.4 times N squared, or 5 squared this time, plus 8N, or 8 times 5. Bringing up our calculator, negative 0 0.4 times 5 squared plus 8 times 5 gives us 30 this time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause I'm going to finish off my table of values. I'd like for you to do the same, and I want you to see if you get the same as I do. All right, we've finished our table of values here, and you can see that it's quite symmetrical, 0, 30, 40, 30, 0. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the top row, which is N. That's going to be our horizontal axis. The top row is always your horizontal axis, so we're going to label that as N. And we need to put down the numbers from 0 through to 20. Starting at 0, we'll go up by 5s 
skipping a square each time. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Doesn't hurt to go beyond 20 to 25. Now looking at our vertical column, this is P. So we'll label this column or this axis as P. And we need to get numbers that range from 0 all the way up to 40. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip squares and go up by 10s. That will get me to 40 and it doesn't hurt to go beyond that through to 50. So let's label our points now. In our first column here we have when n is 0, p is 0. So that's right down at our corner. Then when n is 5, p is 30. We'll label that here. When n is 10, p is 40. When n is 15, p is 30. And when n is 20, p is 0. So here's our parabolic curve. I've drawn it in purple. We'll move on to our next set of questions, questions B through to D now. It says use the graph to estimate the profit made when six employees worked each day that week. So six employees would be about here. And if I go up to the graph, as soon as it touches the graph, I then move to the left and I go, all right, um, this number might be around 33. So for question B, if I estimate the profit, it's 33. But to be more specific, it said that this was our weekly profit in thousands of dollars. So yes, N equals 33, but our profit is actually... $33,000. A business isn't going to go very well when they only make $33 profit. Now moving on to question C. It says, what number of employees will bring in the maximum profit? And this is where your maximums and minimums come in really handy. We can see that our maximum is here. And if you look down below it, that's when we hired 10 employees. So 10 employees is the optimal amount of employees to hire. Question D now, what will happen if the company hires more than 20 employees each day of the week? So what happens when they go beyond the 20? Well, looking at our parabolic curve, it's actually going to head into the negatives. So if they hire more than 20 employees, they're going to make a negative profit or a loss. So we'll write down here for question D, they will make a negative profit or a loss. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.